training pays off. And who might you be? I want to move on to my next part. See, I want to move on to the next part of my stream. And that is my review for Tales of the Jedi chat, which um, received a couple of trailers within the last, I would say, maybe like year and a half. Uh, didn't get a big push, I feel like. Um, it's uh, it's a series of of shorts done, animated shorts done the same style as Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars. I mean, it's you know, it's Dave Filoni. I mean, he he wrote most of these uh, episodes, chat, and. Uh, the whole premise is it follows two specific characters at different points in their lives. Uh, they're kind of broken up. They kind of, they're kind of—I have to admit—they're—they're—they're uh, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, my my first criticism. They're kind of broken up a little weird. Like the first episode is about Ahsoka, you know, which you know, fan favorite character. Um, I think one of the, the the one of the big faces right now of Star Wars. Certainly, the one people are always trying to promote, and for good reason. She's a fantastic character, chap. Uh, she grew on people, I th feel like, over the last, you know, 15 years when she was originally introduced in Star Wars Clone Wars, and now you got a live-action version of her, chat. she's getting her own series. So I get that's what you want to start off with, but it's kind of weird because they got her first episode where we follow her as a, as, a, as a young child, as a baby, and then the next three episodes are focused on on Dooku, a young, a young uh, Count Dooku who is a, is a Jedi Master, uh, and then we go back to Ahsoka, which is kind of weird. Uh, but that's the that's the general premise, and the episodes are all different lengths. Like they're they're, I think the the longest one might be like eighteen or nineteen minutes, but the most part they're like kind of around like twelve or fourteen minutes or something like that. And uh, to start off positively, chat, um, I think the animation uh, is better than ever uh, for these kind of three D Star Wars shows. Obviously, you look back at you know the you know, original Star Wars, the Clone Wars, it kind of had like a bit of a marionette appearance, but the animation got better and smoother, and they they felt more human after a while. Um, and most recently with Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, of course, where the last season of Star Wars The Clone Wars, I forget what it was, season eight, uh, I thought the animation looked fantastic, and I, I, I always really liked the way Rebels looked, but here, it, it, this is the best it's, it's ever been. Oh, and of course, Star Wars The Bad Batch, but this is where it's looked the, the, the best that, that, that it's ever been. And uh, I really loved the, the episodes that were focused on a young uh, Count Dooku, who we've obviously, you know, for those who are unfamiliar with the character, he's played by Christopher Lee in Star Wars Act the Clones and Red of the Sith. And a uh, criticism I always had of the character is that we really never really got to know him very well or at all in Attack the Clones and Red of the Sith. I mean, he comes in like what at the, at the hour 30 minute mark of the movie. I, it's like he's like supposed to be the kind of the big villain of, the, of that particular film. And he's like, oh, shit. I mean, he shows up. And not, he doesn't show up until like the last third of the movie. And then he's killed off very, very early on in Red of the Sith. And uh, and. Chad, his name is Dooku, which makes me think of duty, makes you think of poo poo. Not a great name. However, I always thought there was, you know, potential for that character because he was interesting because it's like we, we heard that, okay, he has some kind of connection to Qui-Gon Jinn. He was the master of Qui-Gon Jinn as we find out Attack of the Clones. Like, boy, would that have been interesting to see that relationship, Chad. Wouldn't it have been interesting to learn why he was so disillusioned with the Republic and with the Jedi Order? That'd be kind of cool. And thankfully, Chad, now listen, there have been obviously material. Uh, that has followed the young Dooku in the comics and books, I'm sure. I haven't, I haven't read those. But I, the, the, these episodes kind of do a, despite being probably like a truncated version, they have given the character so much depth, which he's been lacking for nearly two decades now. Uh, although I do like how he is portrayed in Clone Wars. Still, he's, he's, just, he's a villain. That's all he is there. Here, I love it uh, how you have these three episodes that are Justice, Choices, and The, the, the Sith Lord. In the first episode, Chad, we see a very young uh, uh, Jedi Master Count Dooku. He's training his Padawan Qui-Gon Jinn, obviously in the ways of the Force, but also the, the ways in which he approaches certain situations. And we start to see, uh, one, just like, oh, one, first of all, how deep his bond is with Qui-Gon. Like, unlike a lot of Jedi Masters, he treats Qui-Gon like his son, like in this episode. And I really like that. And it made so much sense why Qui-Gon is the way he is. He's just like Dooku. Um, but we also see how disillusioned he is with the Republic and how corrupt it is. And they display that corruption very well in this episode. Just these senators is abusing these poor people. 
uh, but also the Jedi and how ineffective they have been for decades, how he feels like they've been ineffective. And we see that frustration and rage in him. And, and what's so cool about this first episode and the second episode, hell, even the third episode, you're on Dooku's side. You understand his perspective. And you're like, yeah, fuck the Jedi. They, they're up in their goddamn ivory towers looking down all the poor people, not realizing what's actually going on in the galaxy. And Dooku, who came from wealth, who came from this illustrious background, but, you know, that all changed when he became a Jedi, but he's seen it. He's been out there, and he's like, this is not right. These people are suffering. I love that they showed his, because he, he was, he's just not your prototypical bad guy, like he was often portrayed. He's like, he cares about people, and he's like, this is, this is, this has to stop. Uh, and you, you buy, and you, and you, the thing is, you start to buy into his turn of the dark side. You understand how someone like Palpatine able, was able to manipulate Duke's resentment towards the Republic and, and the Jedi and twist him in that way to eventually do what he, he eventually does, you know, in the, in the, in the prequel movies and the Clone Wars and things. But the first episode I thought was, um, was fantastic. And uh, also just, again, they, they bring back, it's funny, they bring back Liam Neeson to voice an older Qui-Gon Jinn. And I think the, I want to say it's the son I think it's the son of Liam Neeson voices young Qui-Gon Jinn in that first episode, Injustice. And they did a great job. And he's very much the, I mean, he's Dooku's son, but he's, he's the heart of that character. You know, in that episode, Dooku was about to do something very bad, even though you, you feel like he's justified, but Qui-Gon, you know, stops him. And it's like, oh, shit, you, you see how Dooku really does care about his, his, his apprentice. Um, the next episode, we kind of see, again, this delves more into uh, Dooku's kind of uh, dissolution with the Jedi, where he teams up with um, Mace Windu. And, you know, I want to go too much in the sports of that episode, but it's a nice little mystery and thriller about what happened to this Jedi Master. This Jedi Master, was this Jedi Master killed? Um, how were they killed? It's very interesting. But we also see uh, Dooku's mistrust of the Jedi Council, particularly with Mace Windu. And it's like, is Mace Windu actually being truthful with him or not? And Dooku's like, questions that. He's like, I can't even trust the Council anymore. Um, and then finally, with the next episode chat, which is the Sith Lord, where we see, uh, this, this is great because it takes place um, uh, during the, uh, uh, the events of, of the Phantom Menace. And I love this here where Qui-Gon, it's actually, it takes place right after they escape from Tatooine and they have a young Anakin and Qui-Gon informs the council of what happened uh, and how he found this boy. And then Qui-Gon Jinn goes and talks to Liam Neeson, goes and talks to uh, Dooku and I love the relationship. And now it's like, oh, now it makes so much sense why they, why Qui-Gon is the way he is and why he totally always defies the Jedi Order because that's what Dooku instilled in him. But you can still see, even though now Qui-Gon's a Jedi master, Dooku has such love for this this, you know, his, his former apprentice. I uh, tells him to be, be careful, even though Dooku knows what's going on. And he's been, now he's being manipulated by Sidious, Palpatine. And then, like, you get one of the best moments of the episode where is Dooku's reaction to the death of Qui-Gon Jinn, how they handle that. And also, let me say, the Bryce Dallas Howard does the voice of Yaddle, who, Yaddle was female Yoda. Yaddle was this background character in episode one. And they give her more depth than she ever had. She didn't have any depth to begin with. And I love her relationship with Dooku in this episode and how she's trying to help him. She even agrees with him and she sees that, but she sees that darkness in him too. And I love how that eventually all plays out. It's great. And it really just adds to the tragedy of his, of his, of his story and where he starts off with these really good intentions and, you know, inevitably it goes wrong. And he doesn't realize until much later in his life that he was manipulated the whole time. And it makes him sad, it makes him a tragic figure, you know? And I, and I, and I really, really like that. And I want to, it made me go like, shit, I want to see like even more of, of this, of this Dooku. But hey, what we got was more than we've ever had with this character. I, I loved it. I loved it. And, and Corey Burton is doing the, the, I believe it's Corey Burton who's the voice of Count Dooku. And he's been voicing Count Dooku for uh, years, ever since the original Star Wars, The Clone Wars. So, he does a great job. Love that. Uh, and so, yeah, that to me, it's like all those three episodes back to back to back. Uh, those, that's like high full price, in, in my opinion, on the double toast at scale. Now, the Ahsoka episodes, I just kind of, I think they're fine. I feel like they're okay. I bet apparently there's like a controversy with the Ahsoka episodes because they contradict pre-existing book canon. 
You know, Lucasfilm made the mistake years ago of saying everything that comes out of Lucasfilm, Disney, Lucas, Lucasfilm is canon. It's like eventually that's you're not going to be able to do that. Eventually you're going to have to change stuff if you're going to bring things into live action or do other adaptations. And that's what never, I think that's what happened recently. People are upset about the Ahsoka episode. Everything I've heard from Dooku, people are loving. It's like it's really good. But I guess there's some contradictions with Ahsoka. I don't know what they specifically are. Uh, so uh, I, I, you know. Uh, let me know. Let me know what those contradictions are. But we pretty much see Ahsoka in different periods of her life, similar to Dooku, uh, where she's a baby, she's an infant, and where she's eventually, you know, uh, where the, the, the village elders realize, oh, she has force ability. She's destined to be a Jedi. And then we see this next one where uh, we see her being trained by uh, Anakin Skywalker. And, like, that whole thing is pretty much Anakin teaching her to overcome... Um, like an enemy that is just not battle droids because like you know kind of the the thing in the episode is like well the jedi are so used to just fighting these fucking battle droids which are nothing they're not they're, they've gotten lazy they've gotten lazy anakin's like teacher is like listen you're gonna encounter different opponents in your life and so i'm gonna teach you using these clone troopers and he puts her through this very rigorous drill over and over and over and over and over again she'll be rex and you realize because of this Anakin saved her basically during Order 66 because she knew how to, she realized I know how to fight against these clones now. And she was able to survive. It's like, oh, okay. And it's like, that's fine. And then we get the last episode where this one is set during or immediately after Revenge of the Sith, I want to say. Uh, and, um, you know, where she's kind of accepted a life of peace, like she's hiding and she's in this village, this farming village, but things inevitably go wrong. And she later joins the the rebellion. And again, these episodes are okay. You know, they're they're not, not they're none of them are bad. They're just kind of I don't know. They they didn't captivate my attention. It, they didn't tell us the thing is they didn't tell us anything new about Ahsoka. Everything that we've seen uh, about this either it was hinted at with her um in, or like her past in the in the Clone Wars episodes, uh, talking about her childhood on her home world, her relationship when she with like. You know, like uh, in the Clone Wars, the person that found her in Brother Jedi was Plo Koon, and we kind of got like a sense of okay, all that happened on her planet and why she came back, and we even go back to her planet one of the, in one of the seasons. I want to say, and so here it's just like yeah, it's just it's just kind of running, it's a spin of its wheels a little bit. It's not, I mean, it's beautiful animation, it's gorgeous, but there's nothing new. They don't tell us anything new about this. Uh, where the Duco stuff stands in contrast, I feel like it's great. Uh, I loved it. I want more of that, and I, I'm I'm excited for the series to continue on. I hope it gets multiple seasons, Chad. I hope I hope you really go crazy. I guess, you know, when it when it, when it was first announced, it's like, oh, okay, we're gonna get like each episode is gonna be focused on like an individual Jedi, and it's gonna follow this through. So we're gonna go all across the timeline. Stars are gonna be, you know, we're gonna be like, you know, the, the original trilogy of Luke and stuff. But then well, I'm sure we're gonna go to the prequels, and we're gonna go even farther back to like the Old Republic. And maybe we'll get a Revan episode. Maybe we'll get extra Kuna. Like, oh, the potential Chad is it's 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 astronomical. But they they kind of play it safe. I think that's the other criticism. They may play it safe. But thankfully, the Dooku stuff, in my opinion, is well worth watching. You, I think people are going to really like Even if you dislike the character, even if you're like, what is this character? Well, what purpose do they serve? It makes sense now. It makes sense now. It sucks that it took this long, but it's really, really good. So I recommend it. I, I recommend checking it out, Chad. I, honestly, I mean, I mean you, you'll like it. It's, it's a very quick watch. They're, these episodes are not very long. Very running times between 13 and 17 minutes. I was close. I was close. I think I, think I said, what, what, 14 to 19? So there you go. Um, you, 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 you can do this in, um, about an hour and a half. No problem. Very, very easy. I think it's worth it, chat. And it's, uh, it's some good quality Star Wars content. Good quality animated Star Wars content. But especially the Dooku content. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. So, yeah, I, I guess overall, I think, you know, I mean, the Dooku episodes are like a high full price and the Soka ones are matinee. So, I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's like a, it's like a low full price, I suppose, if you all equal out. But, yeah, I think it's worth watching, chat. Check it out. Let me know what you think.